Hello and welcome to today's video. It's time for a new story and this time it is about a sport route. I'll quickly give you guys some background though. I've been climbing in Germany for the past couple of weeks, uh, training in preparation for the European Cups in bouldering. And uh, to keep it short, the competitions didn't exactly go as I wanted them to. Uh, I couldn't climb like my usual self and I felt like you know, like the way you perform in training should transfer as much as possible to the competitions. And I felt nowhere near the same as I usually do when training. I just couldn't really climb the way I wanted to. It's all right though, it's been fun and good training. Um, but I've definitely realized that I kind of have to combine what I do outdoors, like just rock climbing, enjoying movement, enjoying that practice with training indoors. If I want to do competitions, it's like, a pretty crucial part for it because it's kind of like I just want to make training fun and enjoy anything that I do because I know that that will help me perform in anything else that I do so basically that's the conclusion I made from the competitions I could dive into this subject a ton more but it's for another video or maybe never we'll see regardless this brings me to my next point my new project which is called underground this 80 plus slash 9a route with some incredibly powerful and sick moves going through this 25 meter cave uh, in Arco, Italy. To just paint a quick picture though, I am far from a sport climber. Last time I actually did a route outside, I think was like five years ago. Uh, I did a couple of eight days. That's kind of my background in it. And like I've actually never tried a route of the great 8A plus. So I did what any sensible person would do and decided to skip five grades and try this really, really hard thing instead. Like I bought a, a knee pad just for this. And if you watched my videos in the past, you may know how much I hate knee pads or knee bars, but on sport routes, I've noticed they're incredibly fun. We'll get to that later though. I also have quite a few videos in my backlog from like two months ago, but I wanted to make these videos first because Basically, the backlog is just building and building and building, which is, of course, a lot of fun. I've got a lot of footage to edit, but I kind of feel, you know, like I'm, I'm more motivated to push on this project and show you guys the process behind it in real time, like when it's happening. So this that we're going to look at now was shot two days ago, I think. Um, so basically what I want to try and do is make the backlog in between all of this so you guys can kind of see all the nice footage I have from Briona and Bavona but also combine it with what's gonna happen next and this route that I'm working on. So yeah, there might be a mixes, a few mixes of my hair length and beard length in the coming videos, but you know, it's all gonna be the same. It's all part of this trip that we're on, just living life. So today's video is just gonna be a quick look at the moves and what I realized on the first session on the route. I'm also trying it with a friend of mine uh, called Andy Gustin, who's a Finnish climber and mastermind of movement, I dare to say. Um, he'll be in the next video where we take, oh, it's just gonna be a banger. Make sure you don't miss that one. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't, because that's gonna be a banger, banger, banger. I'm really stoked to edit it. But yeah, without further ado, let's start today's video and take a look at Underground, my first hard route project. So we're gonna start off in the middle of the route where you get these massive jugs to rest off of. It's shortly after a really intense boulder problem, so you need to recover fully on this. And that's kind of where we started for this session. Um, we'd been climbing a little bit before shooting this and working all of the moves. So this is kind of like the second go, I guess, on the route where we were just trying everything again. Basically, where I am right now is the so-called second boulder problem. I think it's maybe around 7C, 7B plus, I don't know, somewhere around there. Um, with some pretty finicky, delicate and tricky moves. In isolation, it's okay. But when you've done a few moves before it, just leaving just moving on the jugs before it adds a bit of pump and a bit of, of fatigue, which for me as a boulderer has been quite difficult to deal with. Generally on this route, what I noticed a lot and what I've especially noticed already here is that clipping is freaking hard. I don't really get how people do it so smoothly and manage to save energy there. It's kind of like, 
I feel like I'm doing a one armor every time I'm clipping, so I just get super fatigued and can't really start linking stuff. So I need to rest between pretty much every thing I do on this route. Anyhow, after that move up to the sloper here is uh, when you start to kind of be able, you're able to rest again. This is exactly where the boulder problem ends, the thing that I just did. Um, and you get this pretty okay jug to rest off of. It's like, it is, it is like a flake and it's good, but you don't want to stay there for far too long unless you're good at resting on those holds. Uh, moving over, you get to this, <laughs> you get to this sloper right there. That's kind of where you need to reset because you have another, th this last part isn't really a boulder problem. It's more like a short route, which maybe, I don't know. I, I, I really can't say anything about grades. I'm gonna toss out like an 8A route maybe or something um, to get to the top when you're at that sloper. It's not very difficult, but it's like some tricky positioning you have to do. And this clip right here is for me very difficult and, and hard to, to recover on. I didn't really know how to move here and, and how to optimize my positioning. Okay, let's continue. Where I was, I have these, like, I have a pretty good jug pocket and I move out to the right to a guest on a uh, sloper, I guess. Um, and here it's kind of, it's not very hard, but it's very tricky because the left foot is far out on the left, like you saw earlier. Um, and then you have to do this cut loose move, which is incredibly powerful and kind of something you have to optimize. And it's by itself, it's quite fine, but without having done like when having done the rest of the route, that's gonna be the red point crux for sure. So you kind of want to optimize it as much as possible, uh, which I guess goes for all routes. And it's something I've <clears throat> that I'm definitely learning on this one. Last, absolute last section that I'm on right now is quite powerful, but not not super hard. It, it's, it's <laughs> as you can tell, slightly too hard for me to just cruise it with a little bit of pump, but it's definitely much easier than the rest of the route. And put the feet up weird. In isolation, it's kind of like a 6C boulder, 6B plus, I don't know, somewhere around there. It's maybe even easier than that. Um, so it's not quite at the level of 9A, that part, but you still have to kind of keep sustained and, and, and focus when doing it. And if you're pumped, you can always get spit off a route. Now we're gonna head over to the start of the route. Basically, the first couple of clips is just from these ultra mega jugs with some big moves between them. I wouldn't say that this is so much a part of the route because when you are climbing at that level, these moves have to be very, very easy for you. You can't have this as your limit. I think anyways, maybe I'm wrong, but that's kind of how it feels. So this part we never fell on, we didn't have to work on. We do want to optimize it. We we want to get it as good as possible because it is it is a sequence that you want to just burst through as quickly as possible. Um, the holds are jugs, but they're quite far apart. So yeah, you do want to optimize it. You want to find the right positions to clip from and each hold is kind of different. It's They're all jugs, but I mean, if you rest from the wrong jug, you lose more energy than if you rest on the good jug. Yeah, it's it's still good to work on the sequence, which is why we were repeating it and rehearsing it again here. Shortly after this, where I am right now is where you want to recover fully, because right after this comes the hardest section of the entire route, the first boulder. I think it's generally graded around 8A or so. Okay, a bit, a bit tired from the previous attempts. Yeah, that's all right. So I had tried this boulder earlier on in the session and done the upper section of it, but the lower section I still have left to do. I hadn't fully figured out all of the moves there. Are your fingers cold? A little bit. Let them rest. Yeah. Hey. Okay. When the boulder problem starts, it's with a fairly easy traverse to the left that kind of tenses your core and, and starts to engage you. 
you get to put this incredibly cool knee bar in uh, that I've actually never done before. Like, as I mentioned earlier, I don't particularly like knee bars, but this one was so satisfying to put in place. It was just like, I honestly get it now in a way. I still don't like it on bowlers, but I do appreciate that knee bar that I'm doing right there. You can kind of rest from it a little bit, recover from it, but you really have to tense your foot because you're on a fairly small edge. So you have to focus when placing it. And I think that's really cool. It's a nice element to the climbing. Anyways, here is the really, really, really big crux. Um, you get this two finger pebble for your right hand and then you scream. That's hard for me. That's the section that I just couldn't quite figure out. I didn't know how to move here. Andy did this move once, um, and when he did it, he's an incredibly skilled climber. He climbed it perfectly and it still looked very, very, very hard. It's particularly that match right there that I've been working on the most, and that's kind of taking a bit of time to figure out. So as I mentioned, we unfortunately, you won't get to see the moves that comes right after it in this episode because we forgot to film them. But this last move was the one that I have left uh, to at least have finished all of the moves. And that's when I can start thinking about linking all of this together. Yeah. This is interesting. So you can take so that's how the first session ended. Unfortunately, you guys didn't get to see the couple of moves that comes after doing this crux. I did them in the beginning of the session where we hadn't actually been filming and I realized this after the fact. Uh, regardless, I have a subsequent video coming from the second session on this route and I've already started editing it and it's gonna be freaking amazing and I'm really stoked about it. So uh, if you don't wanna miss out on when we keep on working on the route, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in that one. Peace, folks.